This is uh, clearly a very important day in the whole operation in which we've been engaged for these past weeks and months, and I thought I should come up and brief you myself here. As you know, at about 0500 hours today, K-4 began to deploy inside Kosovo. The first of our forces, the British and French brigade elements, crossed the border at 0500 hours. They're continuing now to push deeper into Kosovo. Later today and continuing into tomorrow, the German, Italian, and American brigades will enter. And I want to begin by paying tribute to the courage and the dedication of our armed forces. Their countries and their families can be very, very proud of these men and women. Not only have our forces conducted a successful air campaign, which forced Milosevic to meet our five central demands, but they've also been responsible for heroic work on the humanitarian front. Our work, of course, is far from done, and the dangers are far from being over. Our forces are entering difficult territory, but they know that their cause is a right one and will do whatever it takes to secure Kosovo and to prepare for the return of the hundreds of thousands of refugees who've been driven from their homes by this brutal ethnic cleansing. And we've gotten this far not just because of the professionalism of our forces, but also because of the resolve and determination of the NATO allies. Milosevic was banking on the alliance crumbling. It just never happened. And in fact, the longer that we went on and the longer that he resisted, the greater our resolve became. I want to thank the NATO allies, the heads of state, presidents and prime ministers, the ministers of defense and foreign affairs, and the military leaders and especially Secretary General Solana for the support and direction that we and the NATO Armed Forces have had. So far today, the elements of the 5th UK Airborne Brigade have conducted an air mobile operation and secured the flanks of the main road from the General Jankovic border crossing to Pristina. At about 9.15 hours this morning, the 4th UK Armored Brigade moved through the area held by the airborne troops and it's continuing north. Uh, in addition, its reconnaissance battalion and elements from 5th Airborne Brigade are currently in the vicinity of Pristina Airfield. Concurrently, French forces crossed the border into Kosovo, north of Kumanovo. After breaching a minefield that had been marked by the Serbs, they proceeded north and are uh, well over 20 kilometers into Kosovo. Lead elements of the German 12th Panzer Brigade have moved rapidly uh, into Albania through Albania and will be entering Kosovo later today uh, or early in the morning in the vicinity of Kukish, moving on to Pritzrin initially. And tomorrow, the Italian and the remaining elements of the American forces will move into Kosovo. I should say a word about Russia, and I won't pretend that Russia did not take a different view on the air campaign. But we do welcome the fact that they stayed engaged throughout the political process, contributing to the agreement that formed the basis of the military technical agreement that we're now implementing. I welcome, too, the fact that they'll be involved in K-4. And we're working now to ensure that they're properly deployed with a, within an effective and unified chain of command. The first huge task has been accomplished. Despite all the predictions to the contrary, the air campaign was a success. Many could not see how well the air campaign was working. And for reasons I understand, mistakes and accidents did generate a great deal of media and press coverage. But there are no cookie cutter solutions to military problems. Each operation has to be constructed uniquely, aimed at its own specific objectives and conducted within the political and strategic environment uh, that it faces at the time. And when the history books are written, they will say that Operation Allied Force was the most precise and most successful air campaign carried out. At the outset, we said that we were going to systematically and progressively attack, disrupt, degrade, devastate, and unless President Milosevic complied with the demands of the international community ultimately destroy the Serb forces in Kosovo, their facilities, the support, and all the assets that President Milosevic valued. And we did precisely that, and Milosevic complied. When asked how long it would take, 
NATO leaders have been saying it could take days or weeks or months, that it would ultimately depend on how much punishment President Milosevic was willing to absorb and how much suffering he wanted to impose on his armed forces. This was also true. And we've been saying for weeks that we were winning, he was losing, and he knew it. I think events have borne us out in every case. Now another huge task is underway. Getting the Serb forces out and our forces in is a huge logistical operation, which is not risk-free. Our information is that some 10% of the tanks, 30% of the armored personnel carriers, 10% of the artillery and mortars, and perhaps 12% of the military, police, and paramilitary personnel, uh, maybe 7,000 or more persons, have left Kosovo. And despite a few violations, the ceasefire seems to be holding. But the most important task of all is the one that this whole operation has been about. That's getting the refugees home. The world's been impressed by the dignity of the refugees and by their eagerness and even impatience to return home. We just ask that the refugees give us a little more time until the situation is a little more stabilized so it's safe for them to return. They know they're not going home tomorrow, but they know they are going home and going home very soon.